Hello, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Uh, listen, everybody, this is going to be a new series. It's going to be on Babylon, as in the mystery of Babylon. Don't know how many parts it's going to be, but, you know, we'll find out. Uh, if there's any ever any problems with the audio in any of these uh, studies, please let me know. I got a new microphone and a... Well, I'm using a new computer and a new microphone. Seems like a uh, false brethren uh, kept my old stuff, so I had to buy new stuff. So, yeah, didn't work out too good. All right, so, now, I guess we're going to have to go to the beginning. Let's find out about, to find out about Babylon... It comes from the root word Babel, B-A-B-E-L, or some people say Babel. You know, Caribbean, Caribbean, the, the, tomato, tomato, I don't know. But um, it has, it's a root word, it means confusion. So, let's take a look at... Uh, well, we'll start in Genesis 10. This is after the flood of Noah. Verse 1. Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And unto them were sons born after the flood. The sons of Japheth, Gomer, and Magog, Remember, they talked about Gog and Magog? Well, they come from uh, Japheth. Gomer and Magog and Medai and Javan and Tubal and Meshech and Tyrus. And the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz. Do you know there's a group of Jewry that call themselves Ashkenazi Jews? They're from Japheth. They're not even from Shem. Uh, there's two. The two main branches of Jewry are the Ashkenaz and the. Um, oh gosh, I'm getting old. I must be getting Alzheimer. I forgot. Shepardim, Shepardim Jews. I had to. I was going to look it up and then I remembered. Thank you, Lord. All right, and the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz and Rifhaf and. Togar, Togarmar, and the sons of Javan, Elisha, and Tarshish, Kittim, and Dadanim. Uh, Tarshish is uh, an ancient name for Spain, and Javan um, is tied in with Greece. Verse 5. By these were the isles of the Gentiles, or nations, same word. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands, every one after his tongue, after their families, in their nations. Now this is one thing, I won't say that the King James Bible is mistranslated, but the translators were inconsistent. Here it is, you got the same word in, in uh, verse 5. Uh, goy and goyim, goyim, which is plural. Sometimes they translated that same word Gentiles, and in the same verse, they translated nations. And then, you know, they try to tell you that Gentile means non-Jew. Well, you know, in the 1930s and night, well, 19 in the 1920s, gay meant happy. But today, gay means uh, you're a sodomite, right? So, words change meanings. And I don't believe that the King James Bible is mistranslated. Sometimes God hides things for us to dig and seek out. 
So, you know, when you get people that tell you, oh, well, you know, it's all mistranslated. Uh, I don't know. What can I tell you? All right. Verse 6. And the sons of Ham. And just remember, Ham is not kosher, right? That's a joke, people. I know. Uh, I, I won't ever get on uh, Comedy Hour, right? And the sons of Ham, Cush, and Mizraim, and Put, and Canaan. Uh, Canaan is bad news, people. All throughout the Bible. And the sons of Cush, Cush Sheba, Havilah, and Sabta, and Ramah, and Sabtika, and the sons of Ramah, Sheba, and Dedan. And Cush began begat Nimrod. And he began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Some people say he was a mighty hunter of the souls of men. But the Bible doesn't give us, you know, that's just from legend and history. I don't know. And Cush began Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one in the earth and was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. All right. Um, verse 10. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel. Confusion. Okay, so Nimrod, not a good character in history and legend, was the founder or the beginning of the kingdom of Babel. And Erech and Akkad and Kalna in the land of Shinar. Now, when we get later on, you're going to find out that Babylon was in the land of Shinar. And I'll show you that later, so keep that in mind. Babel was in the land of Shinar. Out of that went, land went forth Asher and builded Nineveh. Okay? And the city of Rehoboth and Kelah. And Resim, Rusin between Nineveh and Kelah, the same as a great city. Now, Nineveh was the capital of Assyria. Uh, that's where the prophet Jonah went to when he preached repentance to them. Uh, after, I don't know, a couple hundred years after that happened, uh, Nineveh and the Assyrian Empire went and took the divided kingdom of Israel captive, the ten northern tribes, when God divided Israel from Judah. Judah was capital was Jerusalem. Israel's capital was Samaria. Remember when the Pharisees accused Christ of being a Samaritan? I mean, they were telling him, oh, you're not even of the tribe of Judah. You're of the ten northern tribes that were divorced. You're a satanic heathen, basically. They were telling him when he told him he was a Samaritan. So, all right, so now we got the information here. Uh, the Ham's family, which is not kosher, right? Uh, you know, that was Nimrod and Cush and Canaan. Uh, bad news, people. There's a bad seed line on this earth. And I tell you what, I've got, if you go to the homepage on my channel, my YouTube channel, I got a whole playlist on the angels that sinned concerning Genesis 6. There is a bad seed line on this earth. People tell me, oh, well, you know, God can save everybody and anybody. Really? Can God save Satan? What about Judas Iscariot? He was called the son of perdition. To be perdition means to fall. He was the son of to fall. He was born to fall. I have a problem with people saying anybody can be saved. I mean, let's face it, people. Did God not know that Satan was going to fall when he created him? But the Bible says that Jesus was the lamb slain from the foundation of the earth. 
God made provisions for us to be redeemed from the curse of sin before the earth was even created, before Adam was even formed and the breath of life was breathed into him. And people tell me, well, you know, I guess God created Satan good and then he fell and God didn't know. Really? You know, I don't know. It just, you know... God created Satan good. Satan made a choice. He made a choice. And he tried to kill God in the war of heaven. Of course, he failed. Didn't work out. His plan, you know, what can I tell you? So, let's go to Genesis 6. I want to show you this bad seed line. Bad seed line. That's for the sheep. Uh... And then there are goats. And I'm sorry, people. Sheep are born sheep, and goats are born goats. And goats don't become sheep when they believe. It just, you know, come on, stick with me here. You know, this is deep stuff. And, you know, I don't beg you people for money. You know, there is a church in Missouri I'd like to buy, and if anybody's got $30,000 laying around that they don't need and you win the lotto, uh, I'd be more than happy to take a check or a money order or a cashier's check, you know. But uh, if that doesn't happen, hey, I don't beg you people for money. You know, the Lord provides what I need. All right, let's go to Genesis chapter 6. I want to show you the bad seed line. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. Now, go to Job, go to Job 38. They tell tells you that the morning stars and the sons of God shouted for joy at the foundation of the earth. So these beings were in existence at the foundation of the earth. Adam did not exist until six days after the earth existed. So, how can sons of God be men, godly men, if they didn't exist until, you know, six days prior to the for, uh, creation of Adam? They have to be angels. There's no other way to escape it. And besides... Uh, look at Gen Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2. On what day were the angels created? It doesn't list it. They had to have existed prior to the earth. Whether it was uh, 30 seconds prior to the earth or half a million years, I don't know. But the sons of God have to be, at least in the Old Testament, they have to be angels. Read Job 38. That the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they choose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days. Think Goliath. Okay? Now, 90-something percent of the Bible so-called churches will tell you that the sons of God were godly men and then the daughters of men were evil. So the sons of God are good and the daughters of men are evil. So all the men are good and all the women are evil. Uh, why are these godly men marrying ungodly evil women? Okay. And since when do believers and unbelievers have giants for children? Think Goliath. I mean, this is their logic, people. This is their logic. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. Think Hercules, the Titans. Uh, the ogres, you know, Jack and the Beanstalk, all the old 
legends of giants on the earth, Cyclops. You know, I mean, really, every, every, virtually every society with a written history has legends of giants. Verse 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. And people will tell you that God repents and man repents and they'll tell you it means the same thing. Well, mankind is sinful and needs to repent of their wickedness. God doesn't have evil. He doesn't repent of sin. There's a difference, people. But they'll tell you it means the same thing. A uh, certain pastor in Arizona named Stephen. Verse 7. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. See, there's grace in the Old Testament, people. There's grace. People say, oh, there's no grace in the Old Testament. It's all law. Liars. Liars, liars. Your pants are going to be on fire when you go to the pit of hell if you don't repent. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect, perfect in his generations. What's the first four letters of generations? G-E-N-E, -E, gene, his DNA. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. Why would they say that? Because he wasn't corrupted from the fallen angels. And Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So guess what? Uh, you're going to tell me believers marry unbelievers, and God's going to wipe out the whole earth? Oh, yeah. That's what they want you to, to believe. All right. Now, people will say, well, where did the giants come from after the flood? Well, Genesis 6 and verse 4. There were giants in the earth in those days and also after that. When the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. Now, when Israel went into the land after Egypt, after the uh, after uh, the forty years of wandering in the wilderness, after they left Egypt at the first Passover, in Numbers thirteen thirty three, they said, "And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight." You see, think Goliath, people. There were giants before the flood and after the flood. All right, so there's a bad seed on the earth. They don't want you to know this. So, all right, let's keep, let's, let's, let's move on here. All right, let's go back to Genesis chapter 10. Um... Verse 12, And Resim between Nineveh and Calah, the same as a great city. Now we're reading the uh, Ham and Canaanite, the Can Canaan's children here. And Mizraim begat Ludlam and Ananim, Anamim and Le Lehabim and Naft to him. Forgive my pronunciation. And Parthrusim and Casluhim, out of whom came Philistim. Uh, out of whom came Philistim. Well, this is the Philistines, people. These were, uh, that's what Goliath was. 
and Kaphtorim. And Canaan begat Sidon, his firstborn, and Heph, and the Jebusite, and the Amorite, and the Gergesite, and the Hivite, and the Archite, and the Sinite, S-I-N-I-T-E. I sure wouldn't want to be a Sinite. Uh, the, the Jebusites, the Amorites, the Gergesites, the Hivites, uh, they gave Israel a lot of problems. When Israel went into the Promised Land, the Canaanites were already there. God's told them, to, uh, Joshua, to exterminate them all, kill them all. Why? Satanic seed line, people. They were from the fallen angels. And the Arvadite and the Zemurite and the Hamarthrite, and afterward were the families of the Canaanites spread abroad. Uh, let's see. And the border of the Canaanites was from Sidon, as thou comest to Gerar, unto Gaza, as thou goest unto Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah were Canaanite cities. Hmm, does that ring a bell? Ding, 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 ding. And Adma and Zeboim, even unto Lasha. These are the sons of Ham, after their families, after their tongues, in their countries and in their nations. Yep, there you go. Bingo. Now, in Numbers 21.3, And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Israel and delivered up the Canaanites, and they utterly destroyed them and their cities, and he called the name of the place Hormah. Hmm. Deuteronomy 20.17, But thou shalt utterly destroy them, namely the Hittites and the Amorites, the Canaanites and the Perizzites, the Hivites and the Jebusites, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee. Wow. And this is why people will tell you, oh, the God of the Old Testament, he was a cruel SOB. Oh, yeah. That's what they'll tell you. I've heard people say that even. But now, Jesus is the God of the New Testament, and he just, he loves everybody. I don't think so. No. You know, in... Um, I think it's Numbers 33 or Deuteronomy 33. The Lord promises that if you didn't exterminate all the Canaanites, that they would be uh, pricks in your eyes and thorns in your side until they destroy you from off the face of this good earth. I did a Bible study on that. So, are you getting the picture? The Canaanites, bad news, people. And yes, I know that in the New Testament it says one of the uh, apostles was a Canaanite. But you got to understand something. Does it mean he was a Canaanite by bloodline? Or did he live in the land of Canaan? I mean, you know, Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Was he a Bethlehemite? Uh, he lived in Nazareth. He was called Jesus of Nazareth. Was he a Nazarene? He lived in Galilee. Was he a Galilean? They're not all the same places. Jesus was called a Galilean. He was called a Nazarene, a Nazarite. Uh, but he was born in Bethlehem. So, you know, sometimes, just like uh, Ruth was called a Moabite, probably because she lived in the land of Moab. I believe she was an Israelite, but sometimes the Bible doesn't give you enough information. What can I tell you? All right, take a look at Zechariah. It's one of the minor prophets, chapter 14, verse 21. Yea, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts. And all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them and see therein. And in that day... There shall be no more the Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. Now, like I say, go to my the Angels at Sin playlist on my homepage if you want to do a multi-hour study on the bad seed line. You want to know why there's uh, 
there's so much trouble in the world? Well, there's a satanic seed line, people. That's, that's what it's all about. One day they will cease to exist. So, but until that day, we got to contend with them for the faith. All right, so we know the Canaanites, uh, the, well, the children of Ham started the Canaanites. And let's take a look at Genesis chapter 11. Let's read about Tower of Babel. Verse 1, And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build a city and a tower, whose top may reach into heaven. Oh yeah, they want to build a stairway to heaven, people. Uh, of course, they want to build it their way. They don't want to go their, uh, God's way, right? And let us make a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole, whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound... It also, you know, confounding and confusing, it's synonyms, right? Because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. Oh, yeah. So there you go, the beginning of the Tower of Babel, the story. Now, the European Union, believe it or not, took their headquarters building design from a painting that depicted the Tower of Babel. And uh, it's going to be in the, it's in the slideshow. You might already be looking at it. I, I don't know how to uh, make the pictures match up the speech too well. So, plus it takes a lot of time. But uh, I'd like to think it's the message and not the pictures that's important. Even though they say pictures uh, can tell a thousand words. Oh, yeah. So... All right, well, I think this is going to be uh, the introduction or part one. And then we covered uh, the basics. Now we're going to get into uh, Babylon and of such things. So, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.